Uh, Fusion explores relationships between real and stage performance, the natural and the artificial, and tensions of virtual identity through altering and manipulating images. Working with video, film, and performance and photography, Fusion renders situations that examine our perceptions of how history, documentation, and simulation intersect. His videos and art have been exhibited nationally and internationally. He is a recipient of the KM Hunter Award for Interdisciplinary Art. Please give a warm welcome to Jeffrey Chief. Thank you. Thanks. Um, I want to start off by uh, just saying I primarily uh, consider myself a video artist. But as I um, began my career as a video artist, I started um, working with different mediums, um, photography and performance started to um, come into light more and more. And um, this happened mostly because people were asking me to do work in galleries, and um, I thought to expand media more to, uh, to realize my concepts. So um, today I'm going to show you a bunch of different works, but primarily I can still consider myself a video artist working with these different things. Um, um, I started, um, well, um, I grew up Finally, and literally I was going to go back on tour, but 
the lead singer at the time. Uh, the lead singer, Jerry Garcia, died, and that was that. So I, um, I ended up um, uh, following some friends and went to UBC and uh, went to Peter School. And that's where uh, I started making art. Uh, and I started working um, uh, doing performance, but I was more interested in the technical side of theater. So I started doing lighting and stage direction and whatnot. Um, and then I ended up doing uh, directing and directing other plays. And, um, at the same time, I was very interested in music and media with theater. Um, and I started working with um, software, very early digital software, like the very first Final Cut Pro just came out. I was working with that. Very early Photoshop work. Um, and that's where I, I was really, really starting to get connected to um, uh, uh, my personal expression. And I was feeling confident. I moved back to Toronto and I went to OCAD. And, um, uh, I was taught by Lisa Steele, and, and she really, I was really, um, really, uh, usually connected, and she, uh, she kind of led me through this insane journey, but um, I started making video work, out, and um, I ended up getting very interested in um, this thing called, I'm sure you know about it, but it's called, uh, Aerobics. Um, and um, I was researching aerobics a lot. And um, what I found out was that in the 70s, aerobics was one of the first body fitness programs that was used by uh, the United States Air Force. And I thought that was really interesting. And there was a lot of um, different postures that we see today that we are very familiar with. But the main um, through line to this was they wanted, um, well, their athletes needed to have a very um, high oxygen rate, like they needed to be basically the top shape to fly the planes at very high altitude. Um, and so they, they created this aerobics program. And uh, it was, um, it, uh, it became a phenomenon. In the 80s, um, pop culture picked up on this, on this, and Jane Fonda's workout came out, and um, it became a pop phenomenon. People were uh, doing these weird exercises in their homes. They were going to the gym, and they were working out. And, um, this really, there was something about it that was very kind of related to theater and dance and sport that I really um, became connected to. I also thought it was very funny um, and absurd and very sexual, very sexualized. <coughs> so um, I decided to explore it more, and that's when I um, created this project called Utopics. And Utopics, uh, one of the first videos was in 2004, and it's called Utopics Video Guide. And what I did was take um, appropriate footage from Jane Fonda's workout and other aerobics types of videos and created this alternate version, uh, a parallel version, that um, talked about finding your inner animal. And, um, and becoming your inner animal. So a very playful, um, fun act. And it was, uh, it was interesting to explore. So this Utopics program became a very obsessive um, thing for me. And I decided to uh, launch a corporation that was dedicated to body modification help people really find their true self through um, finding the grand animal was. And I, I really needed a, a logo, some, some kind of um, uh, uh, 
signature to, to uh, express what I was trying to convey. And I came up with this. And it was, it had all the things that I kind of wanted. It had this kind of fascist uh, uh, symbol, uh, symbols in it. It had um, this unicorn coming out of the sun. Um, and it was, kind of had the humor and um, seriousness that I wanted to convey in this logo. But it didn't stop there. I needed to really express and, and sell this, uh, this program, uh, not only to artists, but to, uh, to regular people. And Bravo um, asked me to do a uh, video, and I decided that I wanted to do a fake infomercial that was launched on television. And um, that's when I came up with Aerobia. This is a still from uh, the, uh, the shoot, the infomercial shoot. Um, and um, with every kind of program and uh, kind of cult, uh, there's always a guru person, like a figurehead. And um, I needed someone almost like a uh, alter ego of some kind someone to express um, um, this, this idea of body modification. And, and that's when I, when I figured out that Scott Martin was going to be a big head. This is still from the video of Rogan. The end result that I imagined the people was, was something like this. And uh, getting in touch with the natural side of things, and looking at body modification, and looking at um, how we can possibly alter ourselves in the future, um, I thought maybe we could be free. And uh, so this is something that I, I came up with using Photoshop, uh, digital photography, and uh, kind of, uh, what is that called? A content aware tool that now is more prevalent in Photoshop. I was using it more manually at the time. This is 2004. Um, I was able to actualize this idea more with this photo. Um, and in the same way, there's there's a very fakeness to it that I really like. So there's this, this um, fakeness that runs through the whole Utopic series that uh, people think it's real, but in the underbelly of it, um, it's very absurd and fake. But it didn't start there. That's right, it didn't stop there. Um, I thought maybe we could put this to a test, and maybe I should really see if this program works. People could actually become animals and, and live out their true desires. And so I decided to create this retreat, and the retreat was called Zenith. And users would sign up to the program, and if they were chosen, they were able to come to retreat in Northern Ontario and practice the, um, the Utopics program and live out the true dreams, the true, true animal nature. And this is a still from Zena. We did this in 2007. And uh, at the retreat, we would have the Scott Martin was there and he would lead um, exercises in the morning and um, there was mask workshops and costume workshops during the day. So over a two week period, um, these users would try to become um, a multitude of animals. Not only one, but possibly maybe five, five different animals at the same time. And 
during this process of, of this retreat, um, the group split into two. There was this, there was the group that, um, uh, you know, thought it was um, very absurd and fun to become an animal and, and uh, express themselves in a very comical way. And then there was um, another camp of people that thought that they could actually become this animal through through, uh, through program. And this actually kind of blew me away because I, I really didn't understand <coughs> Maybe this was uh, a real thing that, that possibly people could get in touch with this this idea and, and live it out. And uh, Claudia Whitman um, really taught me that. And uh, what happened was um, at the retreat, she found this cave and actually lived in a cave for the whole time. And. Uh, became this wolf character. And uh, this is a picture of her holding the wolf. I want to show, uh, I'll try to show a clip. Scott Martin, et bienvenue à Utopics, un programme qui fut conçu pour modifier votre corps. You will not feel intimidations, doubt, negative energy, guilt, hunger, weakness. All of these will be removed from our intense modification program. these type of short infomercials and uh, what we got was a group of people from around the world traveling to Ontario to actually do this program and um, what I did was I documented the process
nada porque aqui tem um problema de chamar todas que eu achei na internet. Eu mandei minha aplicação para o Scott Martin, que é o diretor do programa, com uma amostra do meu DNA e falou que eu sei uma boa quantidade. É um programa onde, onde você participa para achar se o verdadeiro animal que existe dentro de você e eventualmente se transformar nesse animal. Eu acho que essa ideia, eu acho que, que é realmente isso que eu preciso agora. Não é mais o suficiente, tem que, que me separar de mim. E vou, vou me transformar numa coisa que eu não sei o que, que é, eu tô triste aqui. Sei lá, a gente vai ver, a gente desiste de tristeza, de, 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 de felicidade, de, de prazer, de, 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 de... Só depois a gente vai saber o que, que é, o que, que é que a gente fala que é instintivo e o que não é, depois, sabe? for the users, Daniela, and I'll show you a later on version of her. It's like these lights just went right across that little bubble down. One day. Na verdade, eu acho que essa experiência, ela, o que ela tem de mais eficiente é que uma vez que você se, você se porta como um, um ser humano dentro de uma sociedade, enfim, com a sua psicologia, cultura, sociologia, etc., que você vive uma, uma situação mental e física de um animal, o que acontece é que cresce, cresce o espaço da sua mente. Isso que a gente chama de open mind. Tem muito espaço entre um ser e outro. E aí você vive todos eles no mundo. E aí o poder é você saber dosar e calcular qual vai ser a, 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 o valor do seu espectro. O que você quer ser hoje? Um pouco mais coruja, um pouco mais brilhada. Né? As nossas experiências são feitas disso. Amo os gatos. Siempre he tenido gatos. Mi primer eh, mascota, tenía, yo tenía cinco años y fue un tigrillo. ¿Sabes qué es un tigrillo? So, that was uh, Danielle. And, um, I'll show you one clip, a uh, few clips of uh, Claudia. The first piece, like I was saying before, was an absurd gesture of what I was trying to do. And then when Claudia came out, she was actually taking this for real and, and really taking it seriously. And the whole project then changed from that, from that point. And then what I tried to do was, was try to manage this, these two worlds, and they both collided in the film.
And no one saw Claudia the whole time. She was always in that hat, never came out once. And the whole time we, were, we would do these kind of exercises, and, uh, we would do these exercises and whatnot, and to prepare for this final ceremony at the end of the, um, the journey. And uh, no one had seen her, and finally she appeared.
while I was filming this, I was completely shocked. And I literally could not believe this was going on. Um, but I just was just trying to document what was happening because this was just happening in one take. So I was moving around this farm area and trying to document it. Very, very interesting. So that was my first film project, kind of a longer project, but my first type of film project. And uh, my second one, or you come back to order, but the second one is called Sahara Sahara. And um, as I was, as I've been, like that Utopics project was being shown in a lot of different places, they were asking me to show it um, in different formats, like three channels, one channel, photos. I would, I would construct the installation different for every space. And it got me thinking um, um, about how media works and how um, screens work and how dis how displays can can actually express something um, um, that or multiple displays can express something possibly more greater than, than a single channel. And uh, that's when I created Sahara Sahara. Um, at the time, it was 2008, I forget the year, 2009, and the BP crisis had just happened, and um, uh, there was a lot of uh, things in the press about, about being green and, and um, the trend of, of being in activism and, uh, and, and fashion, that fashion and activism was very much a part of um, culture and is, is becoming a, a trend. And so I, I thought about this and I wanted to kind of explore um, this idea of, of Mother Nature um, coming out of the woods or Mother Nature taking back, um, um, taking back control. And so Sahara Sahara uh, depicts this imagined group of female vigilantes who rebel against these fossil fuel, uh, the fossil fuel industry. And the, um, the, the work um, is two channels. And it's mostly about how we see. Um, the two channels symbolizes the two eyes. And um, it becomes uh, very interesting. And, how we formulate images in our mind. Um, we see, we have two eyes, we see one image, but we, we actually see two images. So there's, there's something about um, how we perceive um, images and, and um, decipher them that I thought was really interesting um, with this project. And uh, this is an installation shot from uh, the Museum of Canadian Contemporary Art. I use mostly, in my earlier work, this is, I guess, earlier work, um, I mostly use dancers and not actors, mostly because they're very connected to the body. And this, uh, this dancer, her name is Allison Denham, she, she choreographed this piece and she also choreographed the aerobics um, program and the, the dance uh, that went along with it. And I just want to show a quick clip.
also my water. This work was mainly, well, my first work that I started moving into more of a cinematic, um, cinematic realm. Um, I was interested in chasing and uh, man versus woman. For woman would be mother nature, and man would be this this technological force. Um, and so in the movie, there would be the um, female vigilantes and the bounty hunters for the men man versus woman chasing constantly back and forth. At the same time, um, uh, I was working on a project called Bridge Case. And uh, Bridge Kids um, was an installation um, that I installed in Gallery TPW in Toronto. And then the film component, 16 million film component, went on to um, show at different film festivals and media um, events. Um, so there were two channels. One of them was a, I like to call it a movie of the week, or after kids kind of special um, that was kind of timeless you don't know where or when it was made but it's about a bunch of kids who are psychic um, and in this world there's no adults it's just kids and they're trying to figure out the world the world around them um, using the uh, technology available The work is mostly inspired by uh, J.D. Ryan, who is an American botanist, and he founded the scientific research in parapsychology. And uh, found and created this, uh, these cards called the Zener cards. You might have seen them, they're these strange cards that have like a square, a star, a circle. Uh, and what he would do is he would has subjects, mostly women actually, has subjects, um, and if they guess the cards correctly or the cards correctly, you would then be psychic. That was that. Um, he was, he got insane amounts of money in research, uh, and um, he had a lab at the university, and um, really created this huge department of para parapsychology. And um, in the 70s, um, literally that department was axed, and uh, he was forced to return back to his home and start his own uh, private adventures. So the film component um, uh, was about these kids, and one of the kids was really interested 
and um, one of J.B. Ryan's patients this woman named Julia Densick. And um, through reading books and through reading these um, psychic books, um, she decided that she would reincarnate her back into the world she was in. She attempted to reincarnate her back into the world she was in. And that's what the film is about, her trying or attempting to do that. The other representation of Julia Densing was the virtual bus of her. This virtual bust, um, or I call it a digital mass type of sculpture, um, is an optical illusion constructed from found images. The mass temporarily displaces the capacity to identify how an image occupies 3D space, creating conditions in which the spectator seeks to locate the realness of a virtual image. And then the third representation of Julia Denzig was a psychic soap opera that I created. They're almost like a found soap opera, possibly a pilot episode that was found on the internet and never realized. So, Sahara Sahara in this project really got me thinking about cinematic cliches and genres, trying to figure out how to, um, or uh, basically using these types of cliches and genres to express these types of concepts that I was coming up with. In this film, in this uh, video, uh, it's very uncanny how the inside and the outside are very, very light. And it's hard to understand uh, how the image occupies the space, and where, where in the space it is. experiments, second so far. Perhaps in the future, I just can't decide. 
say no. me sometimes. It's like I can't stay away from here. Kathy? Kathy? 
1972, Ryan convinced Canadian biophysicist Dr. Alfred Edgar LeBand
We audition this uh, a lot of actors to perform re to re perform the DC commentary. Who would who would uh, commentate for a treat? It is what a pretty match we witnessed so over far. Their performance. The players Which is strange because live performances don't have that. Usually it's just a live performance. We thought this would really add to the to the uh And on the west side, John McEnroe, the rash Europa would have been christened super brat by the press. Now one thing that must be mentioned is the confusion resulting from McEnroe's indecisiveness. And instead of showing, this is a 24 minute um, exact documentation of one of the performances. So you can watch, if you got time, you can watch the whole thing. Um, but uh, what I'll show you is I'll just show you a, a two minute version of it. Welcome back, if you're just joining us. Mark Francis is speaking to you from the 1918 men's final at Wimbledon. And you are the only for a treat.
performance we uh, did a show, um, an art show. Um, we were very interested in um, basically doing the opposite of what performance artists do. <laughs> Instead of just leaving the performance as is, we, we uh, developed products. One of them was a uh, picture of us. In New Walker Shore, we uh, created objects. One was a weight wheeze box with um, wheeze box with us on the uh, on the uh, box and uh, some photography. One of the commercials we uh, I think I have it here. Uh, one of the commercials we used Grateful Dead songs in the background because actually they were aligned with that. Guy. So this photo kind of mimics um, the objects that we're, we're communicating to the overall project. 
this photo called Floater. Um, this was the ball, one of the balls that we actually used. And, um, we, uh, we were really interested in these balls because they uh, there were these red markings after the performance. The markings um, were imprinted on the ball. So we thought that was a very nice gesture as we wanted to create a photo. I wanted to uh, create an object that was a rectangle, like a tennis court, but also was like a racket. So we created this kind of optical, strong structure uh, using tennis string, uh, an actual structure to create this strange racket. After the show, I um, sorry. After that performance of the show, I, I did another show called Long Divisions, and uh, this work was um, mostly about documenting uh, a documentation in the gallery and how documentation um, alters uh, and seduces people into consuming the object. So I was very interested in this, in this idea, and, and I was interested in science fiction. Um, and so I created, or I documented this rock that I found. Um, and uh, documented it in the gallery that the show was put on at. And, um, there was a rock photo, which is this, and a rock video. And I really like that kind of play on words as well. And that rock then emanated throughout the gallery and transformed the gallery. Some of the hues that, that I was interested in is digital hues of like use climb blue, green screen green. Uh, that actually, when I photographed the rock, we're actually emanating rock, I wanted to display this in the gallery and create this kind of ominous atmosphere. So I came up with this uh, blue room photo. It also mimics the blue screen and, um, and um, matched with the rock or had a very similar color with the rock. The rock becomes very transformative and uh, fantasy like. <coughs> so the plant in the gallery would then become this kind of ever changing wave.
what I found interesting in this rock that the hues that were coming out of it were very kind of digital. And um, I wanted to mimic that in the gallery and how that would and how that would appear to people. The rock took a took on a life of its own. I mean, it was, it was almost like a like a planet or some kind of science fiction uh, universe. So I would photograph the rock just spinning in different perspectives. Strange is that my practice started becoming these two <coughs> things. Like one, I was interested in um, photography, um, how photography was very transformative, and how, um, how I could create alternate worlds with photography, but also how I could create alternate worlds with performance. So I was basically struggling, struggling with these, these two worlds. Visual, media art, and performance. Um, last year, our Toronto asked us to um, come up with something for uh, our Toronto, and we came up with this idea of Alberta. And um, the hurdle, um, the hurdle match I guess we call it, was about um, fairness. So we would race, set up the hurdles, regular hurdles. The first heat would just be hurdles. And then the loser of that heat, we would insert a sculpture between the hurdles. And that person would have to jump over that hurdle. To the point where at the end, we would have um, basically these sculptures and hurdles together. And whoever won the last match or the last race and we did this at Art Toronto, and then the uh, Art Gallery of Ontario asked us to do it again. And some of the sculpture was like very, very absurdist. Things like a uh, raccoon on a, on a world float, and a uh, wheelbarrow full of tennis balls. One of them was a stack of Kool Aid. powder with edge powder on top. And people really got into it. I mean, the thing about these kind of spectacle art performances is that the audience really becomes the audience that they get extremely, extremely into it. Almost like the audience becomes a participant in the actual project itself.
talked about kind of the current projects I'm working on now. Um, this past summer, I installed a project called She Walked Through Something Green. It's a two channel video narrativizing the installation itself. So the video is about documentation, um, very much similar to long divisions, but taking it kind of a step further. I, I went down to Leslie Spit, which is this strange place in Toronto, I don't know if you guys know it, but I got a bunch of wires and weird rocks that were actually just rusted material that had been, um, I guess, stuck together and just over the years it became this rusted rock kind of garbage thing. And I thought it was really interesting looking. Um, and uh, I decided to put an engine back. <laughs> um, but I thought, What's interesting about this show is that one, um, the, the Leslie Spit objects reminded me of um, space or something foreign, very alien, almost like Mars. And uh, so I wanted to create a show that um, was a show within a show. And so the actual documentation of the show is kind of less used to get garbage in the bag. But in the video documentation, um, a lot of these objects have been uh, are changed in a different ways. So um, this two channel video shows some of the the work. A lot of these reef like I was finding a lot of this these rebar, this rusted rebar. Fashionable galleries, um, and uh, shows these installers, and shows them creating the show, the show that was installed in the gallery, and it's similar to Sahara Sahara, again, man versus woman, where the woman is one of the psychological force, and the man is more of a, a builder.